loves Jesus, my soul loves Jesus, bless His name, my soul loves Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God. We magnify your holy name tonight, O oh God. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Thank you, O oh God, for loving us. Thank you, O oh Lord, for keeping us. Thank you, O oh Lord, for saving us. Thank you, O oh Lord, for being our Abba Father. Thank you, O oh Lord, for being our everything, O oh God. Thank you, O oh Lord, hallelujah, that you loved us just that much. The scripture tell us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the son gave his life that we might have the right to the tree of life. So God, for that we are grateful. Continue to bless us, oh God. We ask, oh God, your blessings on this revival service, oh God. Bless us as something is said, hallelujah to bring a lost soul to you, oh God. Something is said to encourage those that, that, that are despondent, oh God. Those that feel like they've lost their way, oh God. That they will find their way, Lord. Bless the service, God. Bless the speaker, oh God. Continue to bless us as men and women of God. That we will hold on to your unchanging hand. Building our hope on things eternal. And we, oh God, give you the praise. We give you the glory and the honor for all that you are doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I'll be reading for your hearing. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He lay me down into green pastures. He lead me beside the still waters. He restore my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of shadows of death. I will fear no evil for thy are with me. Thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. They prepare a table, thy prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Though anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I just read Psalm 23 in its entirety. May the Lord a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We just thank God for his goodness. We just thank God on tonight for the blessing that he has bestowed upon us. And right here, we're going to prepare our hearts and our minds to get ready to receive the word of God on tonight. Tonight, we have a man of God with us all the way from Newark, New Jersey. Yes, amen, amen. All the way from Newark, New Jersey, he is a man who pastors not one but two churches amen he pastors the god in action revival center church of god in christ as well as the gethsemane church of god in christ and we just want to get our cups out and to be ready to receive this man of god he is none other than the superintendent gilbert s white senior and we want to receive him on tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's be prayerful on tonight. 
But before he comes, we're going to have a sermonic solo coming from our sister Veronica Sterling, after which we will be in the hands of the superintendent. Let's say amen for her. Can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude, all that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all, all. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude, all that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all, all. To thee, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory.
The Lord bless you on tonight. We honor the spirit of Christ. We thank God for his goodness, his mercy, his grace, his loving kindness, and tender charity that he has shown towards us one more time. God is good all by himself, and the Bible is right. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. It is because his compassions fail not. They're renewed every morning. And great is our God's faithfulness. I love saying that because it's the reality that the Lord's faithfulness is great towards us. And I really, really love the Lord. There's no God like our God. He is absolutely awesome, working miracles all the time. Superintendent Amos F. Kemper from Harlem, New York, Bronx, New York, St. Samuel Cathedral said, There's no God like our God. He's absolutely awesome, working miracles all the time. That praying man told us there's no God like our God. And we salute our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on tonight. Thank you for allowing us to come together one more time to worship and praise him in the beauty of holiness. Everybody that knows Brother White will hear you say that he always says holiness is a beautiful thing. And if you've not yet discovered the holiness of God, I challenge you to put your feet in this highway called holiness and go to walking with the Lord. You'll be so glad that you did. On tonight, once again, we want to salute the wonderful pastor of the New Burb Church of God in Christ there in the great city of Chicago, Illinois, my friend, big brother in Christ, Bishop Willard Payton, and to our precious mother, Gloria Payton, to all the elders and ministers, the missionaries, our mothers in Zion, all of the laity of the great Church of God there in Chicago, Illinois. Well, y'all forgive me, but Chicago is my third favorite city in the divided states of America. Well, it's New York, Philly, and then Chicago. Some of my best days have been in those three cities, and I say to God, be all the glory. Back in 1973, we went to the Air Crown Theater, had a powerful crusade with the late Apostle Arturo Skinner. Literally hundreds of souls were saved. I stayed right there on Michigan Avenue at the Hilton Hotel, and we went to the Ebony. I believe Ebony is there, headquartered there, the Ebony headquarters and Jet Johnson Publishing. And what a wonderful experience I had. It's just been too long. So by the help of the Lord, we'll be coming back to Chicago as soon as the Lord breaks the back of this pandemic. I keep telling the saints, God's not going to let anybody get his glory. The vaccine is not going to break the back of this pandemic. That mask around your face, that sanitizer, which is not the new anointing oil, that's not going to break the back of the pandemic. It's not going to be the vaccine. It's not going to be social distancing. The Lord's going to break the back of it. He allowed it. He can disallow it. And so we trust in the Lord to give us some freedom and give us some deliverance all over this land. But I'm excited and honored of the Lord. Thank God for each of you. want to give God praise for my dear wife who is with me. And I want to apologize to her for not acknowledging her on last evening. But she's here with me on today along with our technician, Deacon O.B. Williams from the Smith Memorial Church of God in Christ in the great city of Newark, New Jersey. 16 Stratford Place. If you go by there, you'll probably become a member because they're just such a wonderful group of people. And then on the organ, our godson and nephew from Brooklyn, USA, from the Mount Sinai Cathedral, Church of God in Christ, where Bishop Clarence Lewis Sexton Jr. is the pastor. Thank God for Brother Chris Martin, this wonderful young man that loves the Lord, who is committed to Christ and just wanted to come over and help his uncle and auntie. And we salute them on today. And thank God for my precious wife, Missionary Joanne White. We're going to go into the word of the Lord in just a moment. and wait for my voice to catch up with me. <clears throat> and we're going to do what he's given us to do. He's all I need. Oh, yeah. He's all I need. Come on. Jesus. is all I need. That's what I want to play with feeling. <laughs> he satisfies. He satisfies. Jesus He satisfies. She's coming now. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. Jesus. 
is all I need. I got some great news for you. He satisfies. He satisfies. That's a belly rubber. Jesus. Jesus. Something about the name of Jesus. He satisfies. Dear Lord, bless us out of your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go with me to a very familiar passage of Scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Raise this up for me, sir. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, and a few of the following verses, and we'll go as far as the Lord will allow us to go. And then Romans chapter 8 beginning at the 35th verse and a few of the following verses. And we will give you what the Lord has laid on our heart um, for tonight. Again, that's Second Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 1 and a few of the following verses. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. But men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins and led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In Romans chapter 8, around the 35th verse, you'll find these words. It's in question form. Um, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord, our Lord. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Felt led of the Lord on tonight to encourage the wonderful saints of God. And if you be so kind, I want you to type down there, in the comment line, our subject for tonight, God is yet with us in perilous times. God is yet with us in perilous times. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God in these perilous times. Perilous, dangerous, grave, grievous, hazardous, risky. Serious, threatening, unhealthy, and unsafe times. God is yet with us in these perilous times. The last days, the last days of salvation, brothers and sisters, actually began at Pentecost according to Acts chapter 2. And they will be concluded with the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul prophesied by the Holy Ghost that evil in this sin-sick, sin-soaked world 
would accelerate and intensify as the end of time draws near. As the conclusion of the last days approaches, the word of God lets us know that there will be a widespread collapse of the moral structure of the family as well as in society as people become more and more arrogant and are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Apostle Paul warned us that even in the household of faith, there will be those that have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof and to steer clear of those individuals. Oh, they're going to look saved, whatever that is. They're going to sound saved. They're going to know all the cliches to say. They're going to know who to take pictures with. All that kind of stuff. They're going to have all of that going on. They're going to have a form of godliness, but they're going to deny the very power thereof. And he said, you leave those individuals alone. You make sure you steer clear of those individuals. Brothers and sisters, these times will be especially grievous and trying for the true servants of the almighty God. Let the church say amen. But Apostle Paul, Apostle Jude rather, he encouraged the true believers to earnestly contend for the faith. Look at what he said in Jude verses 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord, our God, and our Lord Jesus Christ. And so he warned us to earnestly contend for the faith. You got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to lay hold on eternal life. You got to fight like your life depends upon it because it really, really does. Brothers and sisters, if there's ever been a day and time that we need to go after God like a bloodhound, this is the day. You need to go after God with everything that you have within you. Sell out to God, lock, stock, and barrel. Let God know whatever you want out of me, you can have it all. All to be my blessed Savior, I surrender all. This is the day where God is not looking for kibbles and bits, kibbles and bits. But I will serve the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my strength. He wants it all. And so, brothers and sisters, as we move on tonight, when we look at our society, we see immorality at its height. We see morals at their lowest. We see poverty and a sad economy almost at its worst. We see a serious awakening of the demons of racism and prejudice, social injustice, crime and violence plaguing the land, people against law enforcement, law enforcement against the people, black on black crime. And I need to speak to that very quickly. Brothers in the hood, let's take control of our community. Let's get a hold of our young men and young ladies that are running the streets committing all kind of evil acts and beating up seniors and robbing and stealing and breaking into the homes of the people of our same complexion, destroying our own community. It's time for us brothers to step up and be the men that God ordained for us to be, even in our community. I don't care if you're even old, even if you don't know the Lord, you ought to be doing something about your community to protect the sanctity and the security of your family and of your home. So black on black crime is rampant in many of our communities. Foolish social media challenges are causing many of our youth to be severely injured and even some have died. There are viruses and diseases that scientists, biologists, and those in the medical profession, they have never ever seen or heard of before. Right now we're dealing with the pandemic, but then there are variants even of the COVID-19. And out of the variants, I got news for you, there's going to be some more. These things just keep mutating and making themselves over and over again. There's an ever-increasing turning from the almighty, true, and living God, the God of the Holy Bible, unto false religions, cults, new age practices, and the worship of idols, especially that big one called self. I, my, me, us, we, and our, my poor, and no more. The worship of idols and men has increased greatly to the point where we don't even recognize the raw, true presence of God when he is in the midst of us. The story, there was a story told of the late Bishop William Bonner of the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. He had come here to my city in Newark, New Jersey, to one of our major congregations, brought many of the saints of God with him from Harlem, New York. And when he got there, the people that were of that congregation 
everybody that got up had to say something about that pastor. The pa- it wasn't pastoral anniversary. It wasn't even church anniversary. It was a fellowship service. But everybody that got up had to say something about the pastor. The pastor, the pastor, the pastor, the pastor. Now, don't y'all get it twisted. There is an honor that is due to men and women of God that serve us. And we should show respect unto them. But this thing got off kilt. It just got off balance. And when Bishop Bonner, who ain't afraid of anything, my God, when he got up, he rebuked that pastor and the whole congregation and said, I've never been in a place where man was worshipped more than God. Then we wonder why we're in such a terrible state. We wonder why we're in the condition that we're in. Well, I can tell you why, and it's only one reason. It's because God cannot lie. He said in his word in Psalm 9 and 17 that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Brothers and sisters, sexual immorality seems to be everywhere and now is accepted as the norm. There's an explosion of pornography which is leading to many cases of rape and incest. The raping of our women and children is now commonplace. We actually sit around waiting for the evening news to come on to find out who got molested today, what woman was beaten and violated on today. The devil is the liar. It's contributing to the destruction of marriages, of families, and of homes. In a recent survey, brothers and sisters, there's a recent survey that took place that said over 90 percent, 9 out of 10, 90 plus 9 zero, 90 percent of the newly registered websites are pornographic in nature. And you do know, especially in this virtual environment, our children, many of them are learning from home. They got to use laptops and they got to use tablets to learn and get their education. And in New York City, just a little over a month ago, right here in the metropolitan area of New York, many of the um, laptops were distributed to the parents for their children, but they failed to put a parental block on them. And many of our children are venturing into areas that are not designed for children. They're not designed for saints for sure, but they sure should be in the hands of children. I wish y'all would say something to me. The children's minds are being warped. The children's minds have seeds of iniquity being planted into them. All kind of seeds of perversion are being planted into the hearts and minds of our precious children. And 90% of the newly registered websites were pornographic in nature. Let me encourage all you parents and guardians that are watching. You guard and protect your children with everything that you have within you. You make sure you monitor their behavior behavior their social media pages get that cell phone just buy them one of them 999 cell phones where all they can do is call you or the police they don't need all them websites and stuff you check and monitor their pages and know what they're doing i wish somebody would say amen and so brothers and sisters abortion rates are increasing just a few months ago I did a study on the abortion rates here in the divided states of America and it just boggled my mind to know the millions and millions of children lives that were aborted here in the states since the early and mid 1960s but I want you to know those individuals have to answer to the almighty true and living God the one who said woe unto the hands that shed innocent blood the issue of clergy misconduct has reared its ugly head to the point where the world doesn't trust the preacher or the church. Lawsuits are being filed at record numbers. Brothers and sisters, there are congregations that are folding up because of ministerial misconduct. Secret settlements are being paid to hush up the victims. But I want to tell all you children, you young people, all of you that have been violated by that dirty deacon, that messed up elder, that evil elder, that messed up minister, that backwards bishop. I wish y'all would talk to me on today. Even that ungodly missionary that violated you, you find the highest peak you can and you scream as loud as you can and say it was him, it was her. Don't you know darkness cannot comprehend light? Darkness cannot take hold of light. It can absolutely, it despises light. And we need to shed light on this dark, evil, and perversive generation in which we live. Well, somebody once said, Brother White, if it wasn't for bad news, we'd have no news at all. But I'm here to let you know that in spite of all that bad news, uh, there is some good news. uh, And that is that the Lord is yet with us in these perilous times in which we live. Uh, Well, somebody is saying on tonight, How in the world can you say that, Brother White? And how can you tell us that even in these evil hours in which we live, that there's still some good news? Well, I can say that for one reason. It's because God promised never to leave us nor forsake us. 
God said in his word that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He's given his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. Y'all didn't like that scripture, but God said no weapon that is formed against the shall prosper. Y'all didn't like that one. He said in the times of trouble, in perilous times, he shall hide me in the secret of his tabernacle. Shall he hide me? They didn't like that scripture. But here in the pandemic, I've never in my life heard a scripture quoted so much other than John 3, 16, as we have heard Psalm 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know you just missed the dance. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's good news right there because wherever there's a shadow, that means there's the presence of the individual casting the shadow. And I just want y'all to know, for all y'all that's asking, where is God during this pandemic? He's where he's always been. He's right here because he promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Why don't you say yes, Lord? Wherever there's a shadow, there's the presence of the one casting the shadow. And I found out since God is hiding us in the secret place, Satan can't find you in the secret place. How can you say that God is yet with us? in these perilous times because God said in his word that he's our refuge, our fortress, our God in him will we trust. How can you say that? Because God said I'm a very present help in trouble. So he's right here with us and I don't care what you're going through. I've got great news for you. And it's not that I saved a lot of my car insurance by switching to Geico. I said, I got great news for you. God is with us because he promised never to leave us. Yeah, I can agree with the psalmist that say, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, but thou art with me by rod and by staff. They comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anoints my head with oil. This is the church of God in Christ. So you got to take your left hand and put it over your left ear and say, surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to know that God, I said God, God who painted the sky blue, God who put heat in the sun, God who let the stars dance in the sky, God who put ugly on a baboon, God who put wool on the lamb, God who put the meow in the cow, God who put the bark in the dog, God said, I'm, I'm yet with you in these perilous times. And what I want you to know, because yes, we're human. We're in this body and we got feelings like the rest of the world. But whatever you do, don't you doubt the Lord's presence in your life. God is with us. I said God is with us. Well, let me get out of y'all's hair. But I just want you to know in the word of God, during perilous times, he was with his people. Keep in mind, the Bible said in Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. God has not changed his mind about any of us. He was with Daniel in the lion's den. He was with those three young men that refused down to bow, that refused to bow down and worship idols. He was with Moses at the Red Sea. And I want you to know the same God 
he'll be with you at your Red Sea. Oh, by the way, I got a question for you. Have you any rivers that you think are uncrossable? Have you any mountains that you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in things that seem impossible and he can do what no other power can do. God is yet with us. Yes, he is. Well, I got to close. I said I got to close. But on Jesus, one of Jesus's mighty excursions, on one of Jesus's mighty excursions, he was teaching out of the ship. But he went over to the shore and he told his disciples, he said, come on, boys, get in the ship. We're going to the other side. And I want all y'all to know, out there in Chicago, both of you that are watching here in New Jersey, we're going to the other side. Get in that ship with your pastor. Get in that boat with your bishop. We're going to the other side. Jesus said, get on the boat. They got in the ship and they were sailing, sailing. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. They were going to the other side. But Jesus, he was asleep from doing ministry, from healing the sick, from raising the dead, from cleansing the leper, from opening blind eyes, from unstopping deaf ears. He was tired and he got a pillow and went downstairs to the hinder part of the ship. And he went downstairs and he went to sleep. Satan said, I got him now. He launched a sneak attack and said, Jesus is asleep. Let me see how they gonna handle this. He got in the wind. He got in the waves. He began to blow, 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 till the water began to fill the ship. The wind made the boat reel and rock. Somebody said, us, us is in trouble. Somebody go get Jesus. And I want all y'all to know, that yes, Jesus was on board. Yes, he was asleep, but a sleeping Jesus is greater than a wake devil. And even though Jesus was asleep, he was still on board. So Jesus said, we're going to the other side. So I got news for all y'all. And it's in the words of our former presiding bishop. He said, I see you in the future and you look much better than you do right now so let the wind blow let the storm clouds rise ah, i'll see you on the other side my god they went downstairs and said jesus wake up don't you even care that we perish they woke jesus up he got to the helm of the ship he stood up stretched his arms yawned three times and Jesus he spoke to the wind he spoke to the waves and the wind that has no ears the sea that has no ears they heard the voice of Jesus they laid down and went to sleep Jesus told that sea told that wind peace be still. I don't care what you're going through right now. I'll speak peace in the midst of your storm. The peace of God that passes all understanding that you guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. Jesus said I want you to have my peace. In fact I am the Prince of Peace. I am all you need, I'm with you, so I'll see you on the other side. I got news for you. As I hasten to a real close, I don't care what happens. The Lord, he's with us. Even right now, Paul wrote a letter to the church at Rome. He said, I am persuaded 
that need the death. We had a whole lot of death during this pandemic. Husbands die, wives die, children die, bishops die, apostles die, prophets die, evangelists die, teachers die. Whole lot of folks. Grandma left you, grandson left you, politicians left us, entertainers left us. But I got news for you. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. I just want you to know that God is with us in these perilous times. Don't look for things to get better. We're getting closer and closer to the coming of the Lord. And when we get this close to the coming of the Lord, don't be surprised if things grow worse and worse. But the blessing we have is God's promise. I'll never, yeah, the Lord said the N word. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I've given my angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of this earth. All night, all day, angels watching over me, my Lord. God. I said God is yet with us in these perilous times. So I got something to tell. My dear sister, Evangelist May Geddes of Zion Cathedral, Church of God in Christ, 512 Grand Avenue in Freeport, New York, and her beautiful daughter, my niece Yasmin, be not dismayed, whatever be time, God will, God will, God will, he'll take care of you through every day, all the way, he will take care of you. God will. I wish I had my boys. God will. God will. God will take care of you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got to quit. But Donnell Williams, he wrote a song that Bishop White, he speaks. In the book of Isaiah, I think he told, tell the righteous, it shall be well with you. I don't care what you're going through. I got news for you. Going through is better than stuck. Going through means I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I want the world to know I'm coming out of this. And if the Lord choose to keep me in it, He'll get right in the midst of the fiery furnace. He'll get right inside the lion's den because he promised. I'm not tired. I'm just going to quit. I said I'm not tired. I'm just going to quit. But I want you to know God is. God is. He's with us. Hey, I said God is He's with us So I'm going to tell you what to do I got two words to tell Every saint of God They're two words They're real long words Hold on Hold on Hold on I said hold on Don't you dare let go God He's with us. So hold on. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on. We're going to be all right. If the pandemic stays for another 20 years, God's going to preserve the saints. If the pandemic ends at night, he's still with the saints because he promised
So build your hopes on things eternal and hold on. Hold on. I got to go get my boys. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. The Lord bless you on tonight. Y'all hold on. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Don't you dare quit. Quitting is not an option. Winners never quit. Quitters never win. I'm preaching in Chicago tonight. Virtually. But there was a fellow by the name of Michael Jordan who brought y'all six championship rings. But I'll never forget one of the championship games where Jordan was so sick he fell down into the arms of Scottie Pippen. But when that horn sounded for him to go back in the game, Jordan was in the game, sick with the flu, and scored the winning shot. You gotta be in it to win it. He that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. The race isn't given to the swift or the strong. So you hold on. I said, hold on. Hold on. You'll be glad you did. Go ahead and go through. Going through means you're coming out. I know you see a light at the end of the tunnel. But that light isn't an oncoming train. That's Jesus, the light of the world. He's pulling for you. He ever liveth to make intercession for you. He's saying, come on. You're going to make it. So be encouraged. Yeah, be encouraged. Go through. God is yet with us in these perilous times. And those of you that are watching on Facebook and YouTube, you just type in the comment line. God is yet with me. I'm going through. I'm going to make it. I'll be all right. Did you not know that the saints win? And we don't even have to wait to the end of the story to know that we win. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Don't you let anybody mess with your faith in God. Hold on to your faith. I know there's the trying of your faith. There's the testing of your faith. Oh my God. But then there's the triumph of your faith. And so you must hold on and endure hardness as a good soldier. Don't look for things to get better. But just know we have the promise from our Heavenly Father that I'm with you. Oh, somebody should have ran and jumped all these pews. I said the Lord is with us. And that's cause for celebration. Oh, to the saints of God that are watching on tonight, you encourage your brothers and sisters to stay with God. Whether it's virtual or whenever the Lord breaks the back of this pandemic, when y'all hit the house of God, dance like nobody's watching. Make sure you jump every pew, hang from the ceiling, pray and tick like a clock, blow bubbles out the mouth, and celebrate our Savior. Because he's yet with us, even in these perilous times. There may be someone watching today that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ tonight in the pardon of your sins. I've got great news for you. The Lord loves you. I don't care what you've done, how long you've done it, why you've done it, who you've done it to, or who helped you do what you've done. And he stands ready to forgive you and to deliver you from the power and the effects of sin. What is sin but violating the law, the word, the will, the command of God? Doing the opposite of whatever he has charged us to do. And if we're walking in rebellion and disobedience to God, there's only one thing that awaits us, and that's a hell if we don't repent and turn from our sins. What is repentance but changing your heart, changing your mind, changing your direction, saying I'm not going to continue to walk in a manner displeasing to my creator. So have mercy on me, O oh God. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my sins. Jesus Christ came into this world to save us from our sins. God the Father loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ, he came, he suffered, bled, and died. He rose on the third day morning, but prior to that, he shed his precious, sinless, life-giving blood to redeem us from our sins. And he finished his work on the cross of Calvary. And if you would simply trust in the finished work of Christ and you have faith and trust in what he has done, you can be saved right here, right now. It's not by works that we're saved. It's by the grace of God, his extended, 
unmerited favor that he has given to us. And if we would just say, Lord, I'm sorry for the wrong I've done. I'm sorry for the sins that I've committed. And I'm ready and willing to turn from them unto you. Come into my heart. Save me from my sins. Be the Lord of my life. Empower me to live this life that will be pleasing to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And by your help, I will live for you and serve you the balance of my days. If you're a backslider, oh, I've been on an expedition. I'm going after every backslider I can find. I'm going to chase you down till I catch you. The Lord has put backsliders in my heart for nearly six months now. I refuse to give up. I refuse to quit. Every backslider, I'm coming after you. Yes, I am. Your brother's coming to get you. Yes, I said I'm coming to get you. Do you understand the words that's coming out of my mouth? I'm coming to get you. It's time for you to come home. The Lord has need of you. And from the moment you left, he had his face in his hands with his elbows on the windowsill, waiting for you to come back home. Oh, by the way, he never took off his wedding band because he's married to you. You left him. You divorced him. He's been where he's always been. And he's waiting for you to come back home. And when you return, my brother, my sister, I promise you nobody's going to celebrate like I am. But we're praying that you would just surrender to the Lord. Tell God you're sorry. Don't swallow your pride because anything you swallow becomes a part of you. Spit out that foolish pride and tell God I'm sorry, I'm wrong, I'm guilty. I'm coming home, Lord. Receive me again. I promise you he will receive you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't you let the devil tell you that you've gone too far and that you've done too much and that God won't forgive you. What you must do is forgive yourself. Your greatest, your greatest deliverance will come when you forgive yourself. God is not going to hold against you the sins of your past. In fact, he balled them up and he cast them into the sea of his forgetfulness to be remembered no more. So who are we to get our scuba diving equipment and go down into the sea of his forgetfulness? Forgive yourself, brother. Forgive yourself, sister. And tell God I'm coming home. I promise you, he will receive you. He will restore you. Watch this. And he's going to give you more than what you had before. So you'll have all that you need to make it with him until the end. So, Lord, receive every backslider. Bring them back into the fold even now, I pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I pray for those of you that are watching that are sick and afflicted, troubled in mind, heart, soul, spirit, body, circumstance, whatever it might be. I rebuke the powers of darkness right now. Curse the works of evil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Woman be healed. Man be made whole. Little boy, little girl be delivered. Every infirmity, sickness, disease, I curse it at the root. I command it to dry up, cease its activity right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be made whole. Those that are troubled in mind, troubled in spirit. Those that are grieving, Lord, be their strength. Be their comfort. Be their guide, I pray. Wrap your loving arms around them. Let them know that you're with them because you're promised. And I thank you that it is so, for we decree it by faith. In Jesus' mighty name. And the people of the Lord who are watching, go on, type amen. Give God some hand claps, some celebrate. Let's celebrate our Savior, the prayer answering God. In Jesus' mighty name. Once again, we thank the Lord for this tremendous opportunity to have shared with the wonderful people here at New Birth Church of God in Christ with our Bishop Peyton and Mother Peyton. And I want to thank you once again, Bishop, for the opportunity to serve the people of God during this spring revival. And to many of you that are watching or will be watching, I want you to allow the Lord to use you to be a blessing to this revival. We didn't put any undue expenses. In fact, I put no expenses upon my friend and brother. He said, Brother White, we want you to come. I said, well, I, I really want to be there. He said, well, we won't be able to do that yet because the restrictions have not yet been lifted. I said, no problem. This is God's way. In fact, the audience we may now reach might be even broader. And so we say to God be the glory. But I want all y'all to know at New Birth, when this pandemic breaks and I don't have to preach, I'm coming to see my friends there at New Birth. I'm coming to see Bishop Peyton. I just love this man of God like none ever. He and Bishop Kershaw, they just have a special place in my heart. I've watched these men of God work like you would not believe to make sure that our conventions are done in high with high quality and in a godly way. I've seen them take hits that they should not have taken for the glory and honor of God and I just celebrate men that can take a, a licking and keep on ticking <laughs> and we thank God for these men of God but when this pandemic breaks I'm going to get on the first thing smoking or I'll even drive out there. Anybody know me? I'll hit the road Jack in less than a minute. I'll be there before y'all know it. Amen. But as the Lord shall provide, we're going to be that way when God releases us to come. But those of you that want to be a blessing, right there on the lower third of the screen, you will see all the places and the ways in which you can give and support the work of this ministry. 
I want to challenge at least 50 of you on tonight that will trust the Lord in your giving with no less than $50. Others of you don't allow the Lord to bless you like he did and you not give anything to support this great and tremendous work of the ministry. Many of you that can give a gift of $20, allow the Lord to use you. No tricks, no games, no schemes, no plots. I'm not going to tell you when you give. By the time you wake up in the morning, you're going to have a Lexus, a Benz, a Beamer, and a boat. I'm going to tell you what God said. If you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. So we believe the Lord on tonight to bless you in your basket, in your store. You're going out, you're coming in. This time for up even forever more. I decree the blessings of the Lord that will make you rich and add no sorrow to be yours in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon each and every give on tonight. And those that desire to give but may not have right now, make the way, open the door, provide for them. Bless them in an extraordinary way from unexpected sources, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. And these gifts that shall come will be going to the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All of you that are watching on tonight, don't forget to join us once again, Lord willing, on tomorrow evening at 8.30 Eastern Time, 7.30 Central Time, 5.30 Pacific Time. Join us here at the New Birth Church of God in Christ on our Facebook page and also on YouTube and all the other media platforms that you'll see scrolling on the screen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Chris. Thank you, Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on, everybody. Give the Lord praise. Give him glory.